some work. And again, this is not the most necessary thing in this particular case, but it is part of what we do. No? So let me see this in here. But to tell the truth, this can become really annoying, especially when you have to work in big models. And actually, look at this. This is one of the the um, the upsides of actually working with only one corner. Just picture that you had to do this kind of work on the whole table. That would be very, very annoying. So in this case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to insert four vertices in here. The reason being that I'm going to select these two and connect it to this particular one in here. And this is going to be connected to these two in here. So I believe this is done. This particular side. I'm going to do something similar the other side. We don't need that to be totally straight or something like that. We're just going to leave it that way. We have two, four, five, and six with this particular vertex there. So let's just go ahead and add them in here. Insert one, two, three. One, two, three. Let me see that I'm not selecting more vertices than I actually want to. So there we go. And I believe we're almost done in here. You can actually just simply connect them to the corners, but I usually like to have quads instead of tries, so that's why I just simply created the, the extra vertices in here. And in, in this particular case, I'm not minding about this particular polygon there, because, um, as I mentioned, I'm going to get rid of it later on, because we don't need it. So um, let me make sure that it is constrained to edges, and let's just go ahead and move them up in here. And again, I don't need any straight lines in here, so I'm just going to simply leave them that way. So, there you go. Or quick. So, we have a fairly clean mesh in here, so let me see that. This is actually a yeah, quad. So, in general, I believe that is enough for cleaning something that didn't need to be cleaned, but it doesn't matter at this point. It is something that we already did it. And now let's delete these faces because the particular faces are going to be connecting with the other part of the symmetry. So we're not going to be seeing those and we don't need them. So there you go. We have a basic. Um, shape for our table and it is completely cleaned well fairly cleaned what we're gonna do let me turn off the modif the symmetries again and actually you know what I believe I went a little bit of he ahead of myself there because I wanted to do something else in here I want to select let me go to the edit poly select these two particular polygons and in this case let me just go ahead and go out for a second hide the blueprints and go back into the edit poly select these two and these two and inset them a little bit so let's just select an inset amount of let me see believe one is okay maybe. I said one. On both sides. Actually apply a bridge right there. 
I believe I have to apply that up. Let me see that. Yeah, I knew it. I didn't apply the insert. So, insert one apply bridge. And then, let me see that. Bridge now. Okay. And now in here, we're going to do the same procedure. I'm going to select this. Insert it. And actually, let me go ahead and insert it a little bit more. Let me see that. Just a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. So, apply. And then bridge it up. And we have OK now. And now we can happily delete the not needed polygons that are around here. I selected around here. Let me see something. Yep. I believe we have them all. Let me make sure that I'm not selecting some that I don't need. And let's uh, go ahead and delete them. So there we go. We have a very interesting design as you can see not the standard ones that you see all the time and as I mentioned from time to time it is very cool to just simply create something out of the blue out of the you know the normal so now what we're gonna do I'm going to arrive until here and just simply collapse to and as you can see now we have an editable polio up to here with two symmetry modifiers and that is uh, that is better for me to work on and as you can see it is just um, I do convert the things to editable poly but at certain points when I'm sure that that's exactly what I need and what I want at that moment so as you can see we already have everything done let's go ahead and let me see where were we right now Yes, I'm gonna apply here. Let me go to the poly, select faces, and we're gonna apply smoothing groups to some parts of the of the of the mesh because as as, as you can see in here, we have smoothing problems there, and actually on this siding here as well. So I want to apply smoothing groups there, and then I'm going to divide divide the um, the polygons by ID because I'm going to be applying some some materials and actually we have different materials that we're going to apply to this thing so let's just go ahead and get started in this and actually in here we have an end gun that I did not see before let me check that out let me see yes there you are so let me select these two poly these two vertices in here connect them Actually, I believe in the other corners I have the same issue as well, so let me make sure that I'm connecting this up. There you go. That is not an handgun anymore. Connect that up. these three here connect them we we'll repeat it can become really annoying sometimes you know that <laughs> so in general I'm just making sure we don't have this kind of problems in the mesh but that is tedious work so here we go. We have it uh, correctly done now. And now let's uh, continue applying smoothing groups. So if you do this kind of selection and apply a loop, you're going to get a vertical selection and a horizontal selection because of the loop that you specified. So um, let's apply. Let's just simply go to the here smoothing groups apply maybe number one let me see how that looks yeah 
that is okay as well as these ones in here so as I mentioned you can actually specify the kind of loop that you want so for example you select these two and you get horizontal loop you select these two you get a vertical loop so in general if you do this you get exactly what you need you know you get the horizontal line and the vertical one in this case I don't need the vertical so let's just simply deselect those up you see I believe I have some in here Let me see yep so in here we apply the smoothing group I believe we're done with that do I need to apply a smoothing group to this in here let me see that I believe we do Very good. So here we're going to do the same. Let me make sure that I'm not selecting extra polygons. Actually, yes, let me see something. Yeah, I do want this in number one. Yep, so basically, we're actually smoothing everything out here. I thought that they were number one already. So, let me see that. As you can see, we're getting decent, decent smooth in there. You're not going to notice the difference when we apply a, the materials so I don't worry about that anymore so let's figure out which materials are we gonna be applying first of all let me turn on this in here this particular part of the table along with the cushions in here they are covered with a kind of a wool so this is gonna be a cool color we're gonna get that later on in here this part it is kind of a rubber it is black with kind of shininess and I will want to make kind of a border so I'm going to get out of the norm I'm gonna apply it like a, like a black a black border outside you know not only on the on the pockets but also here on the outside it's gonna be kind of black with um, kind of shininess on it and uh, the other part is gonna be wood so wood let me see something any any problems no i don't see any problems so wood rubber wool i believe that covers mainly how this thing is gonna end up so with that what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna divide this in three number one is gonna be the wood because it's the biggest part like the outside and stuff this part in here um and actually I had to do this before I actually divided all of this and stuff because now we have to make a lot of selections stuff like that let me see that yeah so this in here all of this actually is going to be not that all of this is going to be wool you see but actually the wool that I'm going to be using on the board itself is not going to be the same as the one in the cushion so I'm going to have two two different kind of wools, one for the triangles in here, and the other one for the for the plain area. So I can create a cool effect. All of this in here, you see. Let 
is going to have let me let me verify that I'm making the selection that I think I am doing. Good. So all of this in here is going to have material I ID of number two maybe. Let me let me set ID two and this in here let me just simply make a selection like this and then deselect what I don't need I'm not sure why but usually that is better instead of actually selecting what you want you select everything else and then deselect what you don't want kind of con counterintuitive but that's how it goes it's actually easier that way so I have a polygon in here that I don't need Let's see yeah let me again make sure that I'm selecting what I need and do again this weird selection in here deselect everything else this particular area is going to be of a totally different kind of wool. Actually not totally different. It's gonna be very similar but I would make it that they are kind of different than the wool on the inside and the plane area. And we have number three in there. Now we have pockets. This one what we can do is that I'm gonna select this particular vertex and then select the option to convert a face. Then make this kind of loop and then this kind of loop. see okay so this on the top I also want to select it because as I mentioned oh, I want to create like a black border around let me see that okay the middle of the table doesn't need that. Now let me see this in here. What kind of selection is this? Actually very nice. Almost everything is selected exactly as I need it, except for this in here. see that yes I want to create that one as well so we have this kind of border around and inside which is gonna be black I'm gonna put it in number four now right click in here and go to material IDs put number four in there for for the rubber and let me add in here where's the center here convert to face. This one also goes to the number four. Good. So I believe we have our basic setup for that. And let me just simply go ahead and open the material editor and create a multi sub object material. So hit apply let's put number five for now and uh, apply this to our table actually did I apply it uh, no I didn't so um, 